All right, let's finish up chapter four with um, linear correlation, which is R. So if you don't still have the data in from last time, make sure you go back and put that Mustang data back in your calculator, because we're gonna use it in this section. So the Mustang data from last section, um, you might still have it in there, but if you took a break between videos, you might've lost it. So go ahead and put that back in there and we'll get started. So linear correlation. Linear correlation is the R value on the calculator. Um, and it's one of the square roots of R squared. So if we square root R squared, it could be positive or negative. Um, so we'll talk about the negative or positive case. So correlation, um, we may or may not have heard that word before. Some other similar words that we may have heard of could be like relationship. This will help us understand it better. Uh, maybe connection, association, things like that. So correlation basically tells us if there's a relationship. And then if there is a relationship, it'll tell us how strong. So R squared last section told us how well the line fit. I used the word fit, I think, to describe that. We're going to use R for how strong it fits. How strong. And you can see that first example below is a very strong line. Um, so it's a strong line, right? It's a nice, perfect line. So this is when R equals 1 and negative 1. So R equals 1 will be a perfect line. Right, that's a nice strong line. The relationship is strong between whatever these variables are. And then the only difference for negative one is it's the same except a negative slope. So one and negative one are both perfect lines, but positive goes upward just like for slope and negative goes downward. And then these are just examples. You can kind of see how the relationship's getting a little less strong. Um, so 0.978, right? It's still a pretty good line, but it's not perfect. Um, and then 0.8, it's getting less strong, right? Less obvious of a line. And then as we get to 0.4, it's barely a line, but there's still like a little bit of a pattern hidden in there. Same with negative 0.4, right? There's a tiny pattern. Um, zero really means there's absolutely no relationship. So there is absolutely no line. For r equals zero. And then this point one has a really strong relationship, it's just not a linear relationship. So that's why it's so low. So if we did a different type of regression for parabolas, if we remember that, it would be really strong, it'd be close to one, but for lines, it's not even close to one. Um, so let's take a guess at this example. Um, we're just guessing. So I definitely see a little bit of a pattern. Um, it's definitely better than 0.4, right? It's better than this one, but maybe worse than this one. And it's negative because it's going down. So I have no idea what the value is. We're guessing, and you might do this, see this in the book as well. It's a total guess. My guess is it's around negative 0.6 or negative 0.7. I don't know, but it looks worse. It looks worse than this one, but better than this one. So I just kind of went in between. It's a total guess. Cool. Um, so here's the terrible formula. Sorry about this. It didn't copy well on the iPad. These are all sum symbols. Um, we are not using the formula. Don't worry. But I'm just showing you the formula. Right, calculator did all the math for us. But don't worry, we have technology. It would be crazy to calculate this on our own. And we probably already saw r um, when we found r squared last section. Um, r is a little different. Always is r is always between negative one and one because it can be have negative values. Inclusive means we include the endpoints. That's all that word means. So those numbers are possible. Um, when we're close to one, we say there's a strong positive linear correlation between the variables. So there's three things we're describing. We're describing strength direction, and then what shape? Because technically there's more regressions, but we're only cover covering linear. Um, when we're close to negative one, it's still strong, but now it would be a negative linear correlation. Um, 
Um, and then close to zero, I would describe that as weak, if any. And then somewhere in between would be moderate. So anytime we describe correlation, you're going to have three words to describe it. The strength. So strong, moderate, weak. Um, you could say somewhat strong if you're not sure, right? The direction, so that's positive or negative. And then linear. Because um, technically people will do quadratic regressions, people will do exponential, if you remember those from algebra. Um, we're only going to do linear in this class. But there are other shapes. So back to the Mustang data. We probably still have the regression out if you're watching these in order. And so our R value is negative 0.8844. I'm going to stick with four decimal places. So we did R squared last section, and we'll do R this section. So this tells me what? Would 0.8 be strong? Yeah, I would say it's strong because it's close to 1. Close to negative 1, I should say. Um, the negative tells me it's a negative and linear correlation between the two variables. And so what were those? There's a strong negative linear correlation between age and price. So it's basically telling us there's a strong relationship, if you want a more everyday language word. Um, it just shows relationship. So there's some sort of relationship. It does not prove cause. That's one of the biggest mistakes in statistics. It doesn't mean age is causing the price. It could be causing the price, but it might not be. There might be other things causing the price. So what do you think are some main causes for older cars causing less? So sure, age is part of the reason, but there's other reasons. So why? Um, what happens as a car gets older? Maybe wear and tear? Right? Age is causing the wear and tear, and then wear and tear is really what's making it um, be cheaper, not necessarily age itself. Um, what are some other reasons? Wear and tear. Um, miles, right? M mileage makes a car price drop. So yeah, you've put more miles on it because the car is older, um, but miles are really the reason it's cheaper. And I'm sure there's others. If you think of more, let me know. But these are some examples. And so you could have a really old car, but if you never drove it, it's probably worth more, right? Because wear and tear and mileage are what's driving the price down, not the age. All right, I'll see you in the next video for our final examples.